If you have a color camera and a narrowband filter, then you might be wondering which targets work best for this particular combo. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you a couple different comparisons to help you make a more informed choice. That way, when you head out on your next clear night, you can decide whether or not you're gonna use your narrowband filter or not. And for all these tests, I was using the Optilong L Enhance filter, which I've had for many years and it's done a great job. But this is more of like an entry level filter in some aspects, it's more for dark skies compared to the L Extreme or the L Ultimate, which are much more restrictive. And my camera was the ASI 2600 MC Duo, as well as the new 2600 Air, but it's basically the same camera sensor. So just keep in mind that's the gear I'm using. Of course, if you have a different filter and a different camera, then your results may vary. All right, without further ado, let's take a look at some images. We are gonna be starting off in PixInsight today, just so you can see how these photos look immediately after being stacked. And our first target, why don't we do the Veil Nebula? This is always a fun target, and it's a perfect example of what these filters are capable of. For the L Enhance image, I only had one night's worth of data, about 40 images each five minutes long, which is just over three hours worth of data. Keep that in mind. And if we take a look at the master photo, we'll take a look at the drizzled version. I'm gonna have a separate video on Drizzle coming out once I have some more data to share with you guys, but that's an important topic for another time. As you would expect, it doesn't look like much right off the bat, so let's also grab our other image taken without any filter. This one had a lot more data though. I'm still using the same camera, 300 second long exposures, but this was like a couple weeks worth, and we have 165 images each five minutes long, which gives us almost 14 hours worth of data. To be honest, I thought there was more than that, but I guess not. So I want you to remember that we're doing 14 hours worth of data with no filter, and then just three hours of data with the L Enhance filter. Both of these images were taken from, I would say, probably a Bortle 2. It is very dark here. And that is something that will affect your images, of course. If you're shooting from a light polluted area, you're gonna have potentially worse results because that light pollution is gonna interfere with the contrast of the photo making these nebula much more difficult to see. But let's start off with SPCC. This will fix the color cast. I have to remember though to change the filter, but for right now we're just doing the standard settings. That'll be fine for this image right here. There we go. And then we're gonna run this again on our L Enhance photo, but we'll have to remember to change the filter to L Enhance. And then the white reference to Photon Flux just to be safe. And then we'll run this again on the other image. Okay, so both images are now color corrected and if we stretch them both, we'll see if they look better or not. All right, I've got both photos stretched and color corrected and the first thing I notice is that the no filtered image has way more distracting stars. And that makes sense because we're getting the full amount of that light into the camera. But with the L Enhance filter, that's blocking some of that light. It's making the stars smaller and less distracting and that's one nice benefit of using that narrowband filter. Next, we're gonna run Blur Exterminator, and then once I've run this on both photos, we'll do Star Exterminator, and then we'll actually be able to see what's going on in the background, which I think will be very interesting to compare one image to the other. With two runs of Blur Exterminator, things are already looking a lot better, but once we run Star Exterminator, that's really where we're gonna see some nice changes. And there we go, we have our L Enhance filter and then our no filtered images, both taken from a Bortle 2. Although this image has 13 hours worth of data at least, this one only has about three hours worth of data. But notice how much more of the nebulosity is visible, especially the H alpha through here. There's a very delicate band of H alpha that branches off the Veil Nebula and it looks beautiful. However, if we were to look at the same region without the filter, I mean, it's there if you're looking very closely, but you can barely even tell. And that is one of the most obvious things that you're gonna notice using a narrowband filter is that the H alpha stands out much better. That's why the image on the left has more of a red color cast. The image on the right is more blue and magenta. And because we are now in the fall season, I thought I'd show off the Bat Nebula as well. I never even knew this existed until I was looking on Astrobin the other day and I'm like, wait a minute, I've seen this before. This is part of the veil. But uh, if you're looking for something fun to do for the fall season, there you go. 
just crop it in and you got your bat with the mouth and the ears and everything else. Anyway, that's just a rough look at the Veil Nebula. And the main thing we're seeing, of course, is that the color balance shifts from the more red dominant to the more blue and purple dominant. Another noticeable change is that the no filtered image has all this faint dust that's visible that I never even knew was there. You're not necessarily gonna see that with the narrowband filter because it's blocking a lot of that visible light. However, you will see these faint H alpha clouds that you'd never really get without the filter. And that's why you don't really see them here. But on this image in just three hours, it's starting to look pretty nice. And if I can get 20, 30, maybe even 40 hours of data, there's probably a lot of detail here that we can resolve. The final difference I wanna draw your attention to is just the interior of the veil. Remember, this is about 13 hours worth of data. I'm gonna auto stretch it again. This is just three hours worth of data. But the interior of the nebula is much more visible on the left. Right in through here, there's a lot of nice fine detail. Whereas in the no filtered image, even after 13 hours, it's still kind of soft and faint. And in terms of detail, the L enhanced filter is hands down better. Now that you've seen the first example, I think it's pretty clear that the L enhanced filter ultimately helped the image. We had more sharp detail, more of that H alpha nebulosity, the stars were smaller, and overall I think it's gonna make for a more compelling image. And the best part was, in just three hours, we had a nice looking photo. Of course, more would always be better. The only potential downside was the red color cast that was added to the photo because you're getting more H alpha. So if you're a fan of that purple and magenta color, then you're not really gonna get that with the L enhanced filter or any other dual band narrowband filter. And that's actually one of the most important things to understand about using a narrowband filter for nebula. Because let's say you're doing the lagoon. If you photograph the lagoon nebula with a narrowband filter, it's gonna be very red, almost too red in some respects. Whereas if you don't use any filter, you're gonna have that more blue purple color balance, which to me is more appealing for the lagoon nebula. And I just want you to understand that while this filter might look great for the veil nebula, it doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna look great for every nebula out there. With that said, let's take a look at another example. Next up, we have the Cocoon Nebula, which is a fun target if you've never done it before. The image on the left was with the L Enhanced Filter. The image on the right was with no filter. Both of these images have already been color corrected with Blur Exterminator applied as well. The main difference that I see with the L Enhanced Filter is that the Cocoon Nebula is more red. Whereas without any filter, there is more of this nice blue and magenta, which is something we talked about just a minute ago. And I will say that I do like the image on the right more because there's more color separation in the photo. The image on the left with the L enhanced filter is just all red, and that's not as interesting to look at. But really the magic comes when you run Star Exterminator, as most of you know by now. So let's run both images through there and then we'll see what the difference is. Both images are very hard to see and there's some weird pixelation going on, so the first thing I'll do is turn on the 24-bit preview for both images, and then I'm gonna auto-stretch them again just to bring out more definition. Okay, well, we have another problem, and that is the image on the left has a blue color cast in the background. That's another common problem you're gonna have with the dual-band narrowband filter. It's not a big deal. You can fix this in two seconds, but it's worth knowing that your images tend to have this blue-red color balance to the photo, whereas without any filter, the colors are more neutral. To fix the blue colors, realistically I should go back to SPCC and redo it, but in the interest of time, I'm just gonna run AutoDBE, which is a script from SETI Astro, and it's one of the best things you can get for PixInsight, in my opinion, so make sure you check this out if you haven't already. I'm gonna leave everything set to the default though for the most part, and we'll see how this works. It's not bad, there is still some blue though, and for that, I could just use a background neutralization, but again, ideally, I would have been doing this in SPCC right from the get-go. There we go. That's a lot better, isn't it? We have this amazing H alpha nebulosity all throughout the background of the image with a few faint traces of dust on top along with a cocoon nebula. This almost looks like some Halloween painting to me and that's really fun. And if we take a look at the image on the right without any filter, I mean, you have the dust there, that's nice, and the cocoon has a better color balance, but you're missing out on so much detail in the photo, mainly that H alpha light. This would be a very good time to mention that this image with the L enhanced filter 
is almost 50 hours worth of data. And I turned on Drizzle in WBPP. The image on the right with no filter is only seven hours worth of data. So keep that in mind. If I had 50 hours worth of data, this would look much better. And this photo you're seeing here was captured by Galactic Hunter. Initially, I thought this was a photo of just RGB data, but as I researched the image more, he did a really nice blend of LRGB and H-alpha using a monochrome camera. And there is something to be said about using a monochrome camera with different filters. You have more flexibility when it comes to the editing. Although it is a larger investment because you have to buy the filters, the filter wheel, the monochrome sensor, and then spend more time blending it all together. Now, I don't know about you, but for me, the L Enhanced filter image is night and day better than the no filtered image. And if I wanted to retain the nice colors of the Cocoon Nebula, I could always do an image blend and just carry over this part of the photo. That way I get the best of both. Okay, I've shown you three different examples using the L Enhanced filter versus no filter from a dark sky. And that's an important point because if you're in a light polluted area, then in most cases you are gonna wanna use that dual band, narrow band filter. That's gonna block a lot of that light pollution that would cause problems otherwise. And while you might not have that nice blue magenta color balance, at least you're getting rid of the light pollution and all the other problems that come along with it. The final thing I wanna talk about today is whether you should use these narrow band filters if you're photographing reflection nebulae dust or galaxies from a dark sky. In my opinion, if you are in a dark sky trying to photograph these targets, you want to get as much light as possible. And therefore, if you're using a narrowband filter, you're cutting out a lot of light. That means you need more data for a cleaner photo, and it might also make that dust a bit harder to see, especially for targets like the Iris Nebula or the Dark Shark or anything like that. Then again, we did see with the Cocoon Nebula that there was a ton of amazing H-alpha lurking in the background. And if we would have just photographed that target without a narrowband filter, we never would have known it was there. The same could be said for galaxies. There's generally a lot of H-alpha nebulosity in those galaxies, and without the proper filter, you're never gonna see that. So there is something to be said about using a narrowband filter for galaxies to make those nebulae stand out better. And I think the main takeaway for me is that these dual band narrowband filters are way more versatile than I ever thought. Because if we aim up at pretty much any region of the night sky, there might be some H-alpha nebulosity that we can showcase with these filters. My final bit of advice would be just to research your target thoroughly before you go out and shoot. Look on Astrobin, that's always a great resource, and see if people are picking up H-alpha. And then you might decide, okay, maybe I can use my filter. Or you might decide that that's a bad idea, you just want to get as much light into the camera as possible, especially if you're photographing those dusty regions of space. To be clear, most of the photos I'm showing you on Astrobin were captured with a monochrome camera and narrowband filters rather than a color camera. That doesn't mean we still can't get nice images though with our less expensive color cameras provided we capture enough data. I'm talking 30, 40, maybe even 50 hours worth. That's all I've got for you today though. If you have any recommendations on filters or targets to photograph, be sure to leave a comment down below. I hope you have a clear night and I'll see you in another video.